world burn, watching the world burn. August 26th, 2024. Let's get into it. First story I wanted to talk about is one that I haven't seen anywhere except on Al Jazeera. Oh, that cybersecurity guy, you're watching Al Jazeera. That's a, that's a propaganda channel. That's a propaganda channel. Nope, that's where I got all my news during the Iraqi war, and they actually report on a lot of stories that you wouldn't hear otherwise. So the first story we're going to talk about, or I show you the news clip from, is, uh, yeah, I know you've heard about the huge missile strike that took place. Uh, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But the first story let's get into is the Ukrainians struck Belgorod uh, with HIMARS. So once again, American weapons struck civilians. It killed, well, according to the story now, they killed seven civilians with a HIMARS strike in Belgorod. Let's watch that story now. An overnight Ukrainian airstrike in the Russian border region of Belgorod has killed five people. The region's governor says 12 other people, including three children, were wounded. Kyiv has increased its attacks inside Russia since launching a ground offensive into Kursk earlier this month. Moscow says more troops are being sent to the region. Meanwhile, two journalists have been injured. Another is missing under rubble in the Ukrainian city of Kramatorsk. It was after a Russian strike hit a hotel that they were in. Officials say they are British, American and Ukrainian nationals. Let's get more with Al Jazeera's daughter Jabari. She joins us from the Kursk region of Russia. So, uh, Dorsa, more attacks by Ukraine into uh, the Russian border region. Uh, so let's start with these attacks in Belgorod. Uh, what's the latest uh, that we're hearing from there? Well, according to the local officials there, this attack uh, was uh, hit, hit a civilian uh, infrastructure in the uh, Belgorod region and uh, killed five civilians and injured 13 others, including three children. Now, uh, these attacks are becoming more and more frequent in Belgorod, which is just south of where we are in Kursk region. It also borders Ukraine. But Belgorod region declared a state of emergency as of last week due to the increased number of rocket and missile attacks that were being fired from Ukraine. Uh, there have been a number of civilian casualties. Uh, this is not the first time. And uh, these attacks continue and the local officials have said that the situation is very tense and very difficult. This has been seen as an act of terrorism by Russian officials. They've already opened an investigation and a criminal case against Ukrainian officials here calling this an act of terror against the civilian population of Belgorod region. Dorsa, it's been a couple of weeks now since the Ukrainians began uh, the strikes into Russia proper. Uh, you've been in Kursk for a while now. How are Russians there feeling about what is happening, these attacks that are now uh, right on their doorstep? Well, there is a sense of shock and disbelief, but also fear as well. It's palpable here in Kursk city. We are about 130 kilometers from the border with Ukraine, about 90 kilometers from the front lines of where the Ukrainian forces are currently fighting with Russian forces since uh, the Ukrainians launched their incursion into Russian territory on August 6. Many of the people that have been displaced have been kind of moved here, but also the people from Kursk city itself that I've been talking to say that really they don't um, understand how the situation could continue to deteriorate. They expect things to get worse uh, because they haven't been able to see any um, significant uh, changes by the, the defense ministry when it comes to providing security for the residents in the Kursk city. Many people are making plans to send their families away uh, with small children um, and the men uh, we've been speaking to say they are ready to fight. They are going to defend their city. They are going to defend their country. But the feeling here is that uh, really things are very tense. We are hearing air raid sirens on a regular basis now. Just overnight there were four um, Ukrainian missiles that were uh, prevented from striking 
Kursk region itself. So air raid sirens, bomb shelters have gone up, sandbags along the government buildings against the windows to protect them from any kind of attack. And people, although they're going about their daily lives, really are feeling the change in the atmosphere of their city as a result of Ukraine's incursion onto Russian territory. Dorsa Jabari there for us in the Kursk region of Russia. Okay, so that was Al Jazeera with that story. So let's talk about the missile strike. Uh, just a few things that you might not have heard or added to it. was uh, It was over 100 uh, drones, cruise missiles, and uh, I think uh, some Ishkanders, uh, all, all in all told, hitting, uh, well, mostly the energy infrastructure of Ukraine. I don't even see how they're, they've got the uh, power grid up. And uh, when Hungary and... Uh, I'm expecting Hungary and, uh, hang on, what's the other country? Anyway, they, because Ukraine, if you didn't know, they cut off the, uh, the gas uh, pipeline that goes to uh, those two countries. So I'll have it in the, in the description. And uh, so, but they, Hungary and uh, the other country, <laughs> damn it, supply electricity to Ukraine. So I'm wondering when they're going to cut off even that portion of electricity to Ukraine. So we'll see, uh, but the significant part about the strike was that it took place during the day. And I saw a video, hopefully I can find it, was this cruise missile was coming into Kiev. Now Kiev has the best air defense uh, in the entire country of Ukraine. Okay, so you would think that they would be able to shoot down a little old cruise missile. And if you watched it, it was just kind of lumbering along, lumbering along, and goes in and hits its target. How come that cruise missile didn't get shot down? <laughs> I mean, come on. Now, I can understand an Iskander. If you ever see one of those, all you see is a blur. Pow! You know, I mean, when an Iskander comes in. But a cruise missile just kind of lumbering along, lumbering along. You know, so what the Russians were trying to do. And by the way, they did strike during the day for the most part. Although some of the news reports say it started around just after midnight. But I don't think that's so. I think uh, most all the strikes took place in the day. And why would Russians do that? They did it because they wanted to make a point. They're showing you that Ukraine has no air defense left. And if they can sit there and strike targets with a lumbering along cruise missile, even in, even in Kiev, where the best supposed uh, uh, um, air defense is located, that's a huge statement. So in other words, Ukraine is completely wide open at this point. Hello my dear friends, you're in the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 26th of August of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we're going to talk about the massive missile strike that took place during the previous 24 hours. According to information we have, according to Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, today the Russian Federation launched at least 127 missiles and 109 drones over Ukraine. And you know, I would like to point your attention that for the first time since the beginning of the special military operation, the Ukrainians haven't prepared their post, you know, that the work of air defense. So like they're calling this like Znishino in Ukrainian, when they try to give us the statistics of how many drones and how many missiles were brought down by the Ukrainian air defense. And once again, since the beginning of the special military operation, for the first time, they haven't provided us this funny picture and these numbers. Most likely, the work of Ukraine air defense was very poor. Most likely, the, Ukraine, the Ukrainians haven't managed to bring down anything. Maybe they were more or less successful at the, during the first hours of Russian attack when the drones were flying. Maybe the Ukrainians managed to destroy some drones, some missiles. But telling the truth, most likely more than 60 or even more, more than 70% of Russian drones and missiles reached the target. Right in front of your screen, you can see the roads of Russian attack, the missile roads. As you can see, the Russians were attacking from Crimea. The Russians were attacking from Bryansk, uh, from Kursk regions, and as you can see, most of the roads were heading towards the western part of Ukraine. I would like to point to one important road, this one that located in the most top right corner, Yellow Road, and this is the drone that, according to Ukraine and according to Polish authorities, crossed the Ukrainian border and entered within a four, 30 kilometers deep inside 
outside of Poland. And this is probably one of the funniest um, event, one of the funniest case that took place during the previous 24 hours. Because if you remember, a few days ago, the president of Poland, Andrzej Duda, was talking a lot about how they will destroy Russian aircraft, destroy Russian missiles if they are heading towards the border with Poland. And today, the Russian drone entered the territory, the air territory of Poland for 25 kilometers. And when Polish authorities launched their uh, aircraft to bring the drone down, they haven't managed to found this. So it's like very, very funny, first of all. Anyway, let's return back to the missile strikes. As you can see, the Russians were bombing and the Russians mainly were targeting and were trying to destroy the Ukrainian energy facility. So obviously, the Russians have a goal. They want to turn the Ukrainian completely off. They want to turn the Ukraine completely off and no electricity according to the uh, the Russian plans they have right now. In front of your screens you can see the map where during the previous 24 hours during the Russian missile strike we might find the problems with electricity where we might find blackouts and as you can see according to this map every single region of Ukraine every single uh, oblast of Ukraine was completely turned off from the electricity for at least a few hours some regions were turned off let's say for 24 hours some of the regions were turned off for 12 hours some of the regions were turned off just for three hours or something like this now on the uh, the Kirsch front not a whole lot to report there a lot, lot more fighting a lot of news about Ukraine seizing another small town, or but there has been the, the reported use of chemical weapons by Ukraine, uh, and that was that was reported firsthand by a Russian uh, soldier or commander. Actually, that's uh, that's been confirmed. So uh, not on a wide scale. I mean, just on a small scale, but still, the use of chemical weapons, man. This thing's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, isn't it? Bigger and bigger. But anyway, so there's not much for me to report on the Kirsch, but on the uh, in the Donbass, right now, and I'll put the name of the town up, starts with a P, Pont Pontetsk. Anyway, the, the Russians are getting ready to seize this town, and this is a major, major logistics hub for the, uh, for the Ukrainians. So when this town falls, the dominoes are going to start falling quick. So I think within the next couple of months, we may see this thing get wrapped up. I don't know. And then, of course, in, in uh, um, Belarus, they've got a huge force amassing on the border. Now, if they come across, you got to understand Belarus is right there next to Kiev. So the capital could fall because I imagine they don't have many forces left because they just committed them all to the Kirsch region of Russia to, for that uh, stupid uh, Battle of the Bulge uh, uh, gambit by uh, Ukraine to capture the nuclear power plant. So if, the, if, the, if that force from Belarus comes across, I don't think there's going to be much standing in their way between them and the capital of Ukraine. Now, the, the, the talk is, is that Ukraine would then just move the capital further west, uh, which I'm sure they would do. But uh, I tell you what, Zelensky, you better have your bags packed, man, because <laughs> I, I think they're coming for you. Let's get on to the Middle East for just a minute. <clears throat> the... Uh, the, the portion of the story that you probably didn't hear was, okay, Hezbollah did a, a, a small drone and missile strike on uh, Israel, okay? So I, I imagine they, they, that they got a few targets, no more than what's been going on. I mean, nothing big. There's no escalation here. But then the Israelis came back and uh, with a uh, hundred planes now, good God, how big is the damn Israeli Air Force? Well, that's what I've been told, uh, you know, read, is a hundred planes took place, and man, they dropped bombs all over Lebanon. But reports are they didn't really hit much. Although the Israelis would have you think that they wiped out a lot of Hezbollah missile launchers. Who knows what the truth is? I couldn't tell you. I mean, I'm not over there. I'm not seeing the reports. I just read secondhand what people are saying. So either Israel got a whole lot or they didn't. Who knows? But that was uh, that was a huge strike by Israel. I mean, good Lord, 100 planes. I can't imagine. Just think of the amount of fuel. Good God. And plus the cost of all those bombs. Where is all this stuff coming from? I never thought that the United States could give so much military hardware to Ukraine and then turn around and give it all. I mean, we're giving 2,000 pound bombs to drop on kids in Palestine like they're candy. You know, I mean... Good Lord, the Democrats want all the Palestinians dead. 
that's for sure. I mean, no way you give this many 2,000 pound bombs to the Israelis so that they can drop them on Gaza. You know, but 2,000 pound bombs indiscriminate. I don't care if there's a supposed Hamas soldier underneath the hospital, it's still no excuse to blow up a whole damn hospital. You know, anyway, just my opinion. So that's kind of the latest from the Middle East. Now, we're still hearing stories of uh, Russia. Uh, they're still flying in, supposedly, electronic warfare equipment. And, of course, uh, arming them. Now, somebody said they may even be giving them the hypersonic missiles. I don't know about that. That was the first time I'd heard that. I can't believe the Russians would give up their hypersonic missile technology to, uh, to Ukraine. But the Democrats are going to get us in World War III, man. I'm telling you, they're out of their freaking minds. We have to stop this. Somehow, I don't want to die in a huge fireball, but uh, maybe that's just me. If you know a Democrat, ask them why they're, su they're suicidal and why they want to take all the rest of us with them. So, you know, that's the latest on the, the Middle East. Uh, not a whole lot. Oh, good God. Check this video out. I mean, I, I can't believe it. There was a huge um, gas uh, or, or tankers. I think it might have been like eight tankers that just blew up off the coast of Iran. Now, another story you haven't heard anything about, right? I mean, look at this explosion. Let's watch that video. Did you see that? Now, that's the only video I've found so far. When I get home, I'll fish around through RT and Al Jazeera, see if I can find anything else. That was on uh, posted on X. So uh, anyway, yeah, where, where did that come from? Now, they did say they didn't think it was a drone or a missile strike. They said it was sabotaged from the ground. So some sort of uh, uh, force got in there. I wonder if it was the Israelis that blew it up. Could be, right? All right, we'll get on to the next story here. In just a minute. Yeah, just uh, had a report on the radio. Like I said, I just listen to the news when I'm hiking. Uh, they're recalling, I don't know how much apple juice because there's arsenic in your apple juice. But that that buzzed me on to another story that I just uh, read about here recently. And the reason I'm getting into this is, you know, one of the huge reasons that Trump and um, that uh, and RFK Jr. teamed up is they want to uh, get the uh, the big pharma and the big food conglomerates get their hands off of the food supply so that you can get some healthy food. You know, RFK points out that, you know, we're all being poisoned. But anyway, there was uh, this company, I can't remember the name of it, hopefully I'll find it <clears throat> when I post this video, but the baby food, they said it was organic baby food sold by Whole Foods under um, Jeff Bezos, you know, under Amazon, Whole Foods, they're owned by uh, Amazon. And uh, it had arsenic, mercury, I can't remember, it was something else in there. It was toxic as hell for these kids. So perfectly normal little babies who were, you know, sharp as a tack. Now they've got all kinds of mental problems, autism and everything else at, at the age of two. So imagine there's gonna be a huge class, you know, class action lawsuit. So you see how big, big, uh, big food conglomerates can poison you, man. And uh, so, and then of course the Democrats, they can't stand small farmers. There's one in uh, Pennsylvania. He's an Amish farmer. I, I swear I got to find him. Robert Barnes promotes him all the time. Well, Robert Barnes is defending him. They're trying to shut him down. But uh, he'll sell he'll, he'll sell food outside of Pennsylvania right now. And if I can find him, I'm going to buy some food off of him because I imagine it's a, it's probably pretty healthy. But we need more of that. You know, one of the things that when the stuff hits the fan, I wanted to find some local farmers here in Florida. And like I said, I pay them, pay them with silver and gold and platinum, uh, you know. And then, of course, I'll, I wouldn't mind, you know, because I, you can see I can function for a few hours. So uh, I could go offer some work, you know, work for food on the farm. I actually love hard work. I would love working on a farm. And, uh, and that way I could get all my food from local farmers. And I think that's where we're going to have to go. And get rid of these big food. I mean, Bill Gates has bought up more farmland than anybody else. Why do you think that is? Because he wants to poison you, man. He's an evil son of a gun. Him and George Soros. 
I mean, George Soros is Palatine, man. I mean, he's he's, he's the evil emperor in Star Wars. That's the last way I look at him. So, anyway, I wanted to get on the on the food story for just a minute because, uh, boy, that, that apple juice story, that, that hit me. I was like, I'll be damned. I haven't talked about that baby food that poisoned a bunch of kids. You know, now it makes me scared to, to eat what's in my cabinet. God only knows what's in the food that I've bought because... I try to stay away from processed food for the most part, you know, but, uh, but you, you know, you can't help it. Like, I, I, I love ramen, you know, I love the oodles, oodles and noodles, man, and uh, ramen, you know, every now and then I just want it, but man, talk about processed food, but the only reason I crave it was that's, I had to survive on that in college, so, and, it, well, and I guess you could probably say it has ill affected me, because <laughs> everybody thinks I'm batshit crazy, but uh, anyway, so, uh, but yeah. Those are two stories I thought were very interesting. Let's get on to free speech for just a second. You knew that uh, the founder or the owner of uh, Telegram just got uh, arrested in uh, France. The, uh, boy, I, but you know, I don't think you know the circumstances surrounding that. That plane was on an international runway. So if you really brought it before the UN, France violated international law to go out there and, uh, and get him off of his private plane, which was just stopping to be, be refueled. So, and I'm sure that that was ordered by the Biden administration. I have no proof of that, but uh, usually France won't do anything unless the, uh, the puppet master, the United States, tells them what to do. Now, the, the other side to that story, and I read, I don't know if it's true or not, they're saying they're gonna try to sentence him up to 20 years in jail. 20 years in jail. I mean, why isn't Zuckerberg going to jail? He's got more uh, violations on his website. Well, you know the reason why, because the government runs Facebook. If you're using Facebook, get the hell off of there, man. That's just the government shiv. They, they watch everything you do and they'll put stuff in your feed to try to uh, brainwash you. You don't want to be on Facebook. And boy, I tell you, Elon was supposed to go to Europe here in the next couple of months. I don't think he'd better go. I think they're going to they're, they're going to throw him in jail, and if the Democrats win the election, Elon's going to jail. I can guarantee you that. Probably me too. Probably anybody that is for free speech. The Democrats hate free speech. You understand that, right? They can't stand the Constitution. They can't stand the First Amendment. They can't stand free speech. They don't want you speaking your mind. They want you to just listen to everything that their propaganda media machine uh, puts out to you. Democrats hate. Free speech, understand that. They are the authoritarian party that is trying to censor everything you and I say. All right, so I wanted to get onto that story. But uh, that was, that's crazy, man, arresting that guy in France. Never thought I'd see anything like that. Now, let's talk about Telegram for just a minute, because I want to tell you what, I was, uh, well, it's funny, I'll, the other, other part of the story is uh, Putin came out and told him if he can get out of jail to come on to Russia, that Russia will welcome him there. I, I, like I said, I'll post the guy's name in the stream. I can't remember it off the top of my head. So I found it funny. And then also Putin just put out another uh, decree that said all Westerners are, you know, that, you know, are being persecuted are welcome to flee to Russia. Remember when the Soviet Union was there and a lot of people were fleeing the Soviet Union and we would welcome them here as, as refugees or, or uh, political political prosecutions, you know. Well, now it's the complete reverse. Russia is welcoming anybody from the West who wants to travel there to escape persecution by a tyrannical Democrat government that uh, hates free speech. Uh, and that's another thing. Kamala came out. She said, she's taking your guns away. You ready for that? You ready for the FBI knocking on your door? under a Democrat, authoritarian, globalist rule? I'm not. I mean, I don't know. I, I probably have to, you know, say say no, and then, of course, I'd probably get killed because <laughs> they, won't, they won't take no for an answer, right, when they try to take my guns away. So, because, I, you know, I can't survive in a, in a jail cell because of my handicap. If I don't have my medical equipment, I'm a dead man anyway. So you might as well just... Uh, Go out, uh, go out with uh, your your words blazing, right? Your words blazing. All right, well, we'll get on the next story here in just a minute. So I got another one for you, another democratic dilemma. 
You know that Kamala Harris has not done a single interview or met with her constituents in a town hall or even taken questions from the, the uh, lapdog media or the government propaganda media in 35 days. <laughs> well, 36 now, 36, 37, what are we getting up to 40? I don't think they're going to let her. Yeah, and also I heard news today that they're, they're not even going to run on a platform. They said it's too late for them to put together a platform. So all these people voting Democrat don't even know what they're voting for. I can tell you what they're voting for. They're voting for uh, killing free speech, killing, uh, having guns seized around the United States, mass incarnate in incarceration. I mean, good God, the whole country's going to go to hell. So uh, if you know a Democrat, tell them, say, look, man, you might, let, let, let's say you hate Trump and you don't like RFK Jr. or J.D. Vance or whatever. Then vote for Jill Stein, man. Don't vote for Kamala. I mean, you know, Jill Stein is the only candidate that's against what's taking place in Gaza. Uh, you know, RFK is all for bombing the shit out of the Palestinians. Trump appears to be all for it. So uh, either vote there it doesn't help the Palestinian cause at all. So, you know, that's uh, that's a given. So at least Jill Stein, you know, is saying that it is a basically a genocide and if you don't believe that they just came out with news that now there's polio running rampant among the Palestinians and uh, the UN and the World Health Organization I wouldn't trust either one of them <laughs> but, but supposedly they're going to go in there on a mass vaccination program of the Palestinians that are still alive to try to stop the spread of the polio but I don't think that matters I mean the water in Gaza right now is contaminated you know they got no fresh water and the Israelis are blocking any supplies that the UN tries to bring in. And a lot of them are starving to death. So, you know, what's, I, I don't know. I mean, you either die from polio, you die from starvation, you die from contaminated water, or you die from 2,000 pound bombs dropped on your head. So, or exposure, you know, because a lot of them don't have any shelter now. So, I mean, what difference does it make the way you die? And who would take a vaccination from the WHO? I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, if you told me tomorrow, you're going to die without this vaccination, I'd say, you know what, you sons of guns, I don't trust any vaccine. I won't even get a flu shot no more. I'm not telling you what to do. You do you, man. I mean, if you want to get the booster to your booster to your booster to your booster to your booster and put a condom over top of your head, that's just fine with me. That is just fine with me. I don't care. I'm not going to, you know, I mean, I have to admit when I see somebody in a mask, I just go, Democrat. <laughs> but that's about it. You know, I don't, I don't say anything to him like, why the hell you got that damn mask on? You know, you do, you do you, man. If you think a mask makes you safer, by all means, wear one. Although I tell you to get an N95, you know, that, that should give you some protection if you really want to wear a mask. So anyway, I just, and then of course, you know, RFK, that's one of the things that he was running on was uh, the vaccine injuries. And I, uh, he was talking about that. There was a, another article, I'm going to post it here, that it was about excess deaths in Norway. Now, we don't know the cause of those excess deaths, but we can speculate, can't we? Amazing how all of a sudden people are dying in Norway. And guess what Norway got? The vax, the jab. They got the jab, baby. They, in fact, probably all of Norway got the jab. So there's, now there's a huge number of excess deaths. I would like to see a study on the correlation between the two, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? So anyway, that's another thing that JFK and Trump are going to work on is uh, getting the vaccine safe. You know, no more of this uh, uh, legal immunity for the um, for, uh, pharmaceutical companies. You know how far that legal immunity goes? And Barnes pointed this out. You go into a CVS to get the jab. You slip and fall on the floor. And, and you bust your head open and you end up in the hospital brain damaged. And your wife or your kids sue the uh, CVS because the floor was wet and you slipped and fell on your head. They can use the vaccine law and say, nope, nope, they were here to get the jab. Therefore, we're illegally immune from this person falling and busting their head on the floor. That's how far the legal immunity goes for these uh, uh, anything that the pharmaceutical companies are putting out. Once they have complete, so you can't even sue them for slipping and falling on the floor, no CVS. That ain't right, man. So we, we need the ability, if, if they're going to put out a product 
we need the ability to make sure that it's safe and does what it's supposed to do. You know, a lot of people are pointing out, I get them all the time on, on X, they say, if you're unvaccinated, how many times have you had COVID? I've had it once. If you're vaccinated, how many times have you had COVID? Well, if you're Fachi, you've had it about three times now. <laughs> and from what I understand, he's got some other disease. Somebody was saying maybe the government's taking him out and, you know, slipping him all kinds of diseases to, to take him out the way that he took 10 million people out around the world. That little short troll, that evil little bastard. All right, here you go. Let's do the quick finance report. So the stock market was down, I don't know, just 54 points. I cannot believe <laughs> that with the, the jobs numbers corrected, or somewhat corrected, that uh, that, that stock market hasn't been cut in half. But uh, you know you know how that's, uh, that doesn't represent the economy at all. The, uh, the other big news was, uh, what was it? Well, gold right now is still hovering around $2,500 an ounce. Silver is bouncing back and forth across $30 an ounce. And uh, what was the other? Oh yeah, and I saw a video on land in oh, um, Orlando. And uh, they're saying that, uh, boy, the housing market there is crashing big time. So according to the video, if you want to believe it, I mean, I certainly would believe it. They said that, uh, that the houses, are just, they're just not selling at all. And so the prices are coming down. Now, I live in central Florida. I haven't seen anything like that. I mean, all I see is new construction going up around here. I mean, entire neighborhoods going up in less than a year. And then all I see is sold signs. So I don't know. I guess it depends on where you are. But I imagine if it's happening in Orlando, that's about an hour from me. It should be coming my, our way. So I do think the real estate crash is coming. And what's here, it just hasn't accelerated to where people are noticing big time. But it's coming. Oh, I forgot about this one. <laughs> Two more stories. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, uh, you know, they're going to be getting on Fachi. Uh, it looks like uh, Tulsi Gabbard and uh, JFK Jr. will team up. Uh, hopefully they're going to look into the, they're going to look into those bioweapons labs that uh, that Fachi was running in uh, Ukraine. If you happen to challenge them, whether it be on COVID or it be on uh, things like, and this, this was, uh, I think this was the thing that, that caused Mitt Romney to, to call me a treasonous liar was saying, Hey, there are, um, U S funded DOD funded bio labs in Ukraine that should be secured because there's a war going on over there. And the last thing we or the world needs is anything going on in those bio labs being unleashed in a way that could pose a threat to people. That that was seen as- uh, But I should just say, you weren't guessing. No. You got that, or it was confirmed in any case, in a public exchange in the Senate between Marco Rubio of Florida, the sitting yes. Republican Senator, and Victoria Nuland, the Under Secretary of State, who volunteered it on camera. Yes. So- And it was on the DOD website. <laughs> talking about their long history right. of funding these bio labs, not only in Ukraine, but in many other countries of course, because they, around the world. Because it's outside U.S. law, right? right? So they can, and it's it's bioweapons research, obviously. But you, you were just, you. I don't even think you said that. You just said basically what the Undersecretary of State said right. in the Senate. Victoria Newland kind of blithely announced during congressional testimony last year that, oh, by the way, we have these bio labs in Ukraine. Yeah. And that was like kind of ignored and the people who covered it got attacked for covering it. But the fact remains there are U.S. biolabs in Ukraine. Why would we have biolabs in Ukraine? Uh, um, we have biolabs in Ukraine because we're developing bioweapons. And, you know, and those bioweapons are using all kinds of new synthetic uh, biology and CRISPR technology and genetic engineering techniques that were not available to previous generation. And they can make frightening, frightening stuff. Um, what happened was, and uh, you know, when when we walked away from when the Patriot Act reopened the bioweapons arms race in two thousand one, the Pentagon began putting a lot of money into bioweapons, but they were nervous at that time because if you violate Geneva, the Geneva Convention, it's a hanging offense, and they weren't sure that that 
provision in the Patriot Act would actually hold up as a loophole to treaties that had been ratified by Congress. So they were nervous about actually going full force into bioweapons development. So they transferred the authority for uh, biosecurity to one agency in the, in the HHS uh, called the National Institute for Infectious and Allergic Diseases, run by Anthony Fauci. So Anthony Fauci got all the responsibility for bioweapons development. He got, at that time, a 68% raise from the Pentagon in order to do that work. So, and that's why he was the highest paid official in American in the American government of you know four four million people in the American. He's the high. He gets more money. He got more money, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year than the president. That any Supreme Court judge, any, any member of Congress, he was the highest paid, and it's because he got that sixty eight percent raise from the Pentagon to do bioweapons development. Now, when you do bioweapons development, every bioweapon. It needs a vaccine, so you develop them side by side, because in 100% of the cases when you deploy a bioweapon, there's blowback. Your side also gets sick. So in order to deploy one offensively, you need a vaccine to, um, to counter it. So you need to vaccinate your team before you deploy it. So those two things are, are developed through a, a, a field of science called gain-of-function science, where you take infections, where you take an infectious microbe, and you amplify its infectivity, or you make it jump species, so it may kill monkeys, now you make it kill humans, and you adopt it that way, and there's all kinds of methods, for that. and then you make it immune to antibiotics and to therapeutic drugs and to other therapies, so it's actually the inverse of medicine. For 2,800 years since Hippocrates, doctors have been trying to figure out how to make microbes less infectious and less deadly and develop antibiotics and therapeutics to do that. Well, this, the guys who are involved in this, there's 36,000 what are called life scientists, but they're actually death scientists, um, who are now employed full-time in developing you know, microbes that will can be used to kill people. So we haven't gotten much information on those. I I don't remember how many it was. It was a lot. It was like 13 different bioweapons labs that they had in Ukraine. So at least uh, it looks like Tulsi and, well, I'm assuming they get elected, uh, that they will look into what that was all about. Maybe we can get that little short troll in jail. So that was one. And then there's a, there's a post. I don't know if this is true, but uh, they're saying that um, mosquitoes, well, there was a picture of a helicopter and it was releasing mosquitoes. I want to say it was Vermont and, of course, Florida. And uh, these, these mosquitoes are carrying a, a, d a disease of some kind. I'll put it up in the post here uh, that uh, has about one-third kill ratio. So if I get bit by a mosquito, <laughs> I, might, I might not be talking to you tomorrow. Uh, but, but they're blaming Bill Gates for releasing these, uh, these weaponized mosquitoes. So who knows? I mean, I... I, I tell you what, every time there's a conspiracy theory, I think, that just sounds outrageous, doesn't it? That sounds outrageous. Then, you know, a year later or two years later, I'll be damned. That was true. <laughs> so I'll show you the post about the mosquitoes. You, you make up your own mind. I mean, that's the thing. You got to get the information and believe what you want or don't believe what you want. I mean, there are some things that are just too stupid to believe. You know, I still see the Democrats going on about this. 2025 thing. I don't even have a clue what that is. I'm pretty clued in on stuff like that. I, I, anyway, I just ignore them. I'm like, you know, oh, 2025. What? There must be another thing. It was like that QAnon. I remember back when I was on Parlor before they took it down, and I had a big following. And I think it was, it might have been the FBI and uh, the three-letter agencies trolling me, and they kept saying, you know, why don't you join QAnon? I said, I don't even know what QAnon is, and I have no desire to join. Whatever it is, uh, it doesn't sound good. So I, you know, so I really never, I couldn't tell you to this day what the hell a QAnon is. And uh, but boy, they were trolling me big time to try to get me to to say something wrong or uh, or maybe uh, reach out to see if I, they could recruit me into the QAnon. And I, I, because I don't think it was Republicans that were doing that or MAGA people. I think that was the three-letter agencies trolling people, trying to get it, trying to you know set them up. Yeah, just the way they set up General Flynn. You know, brought him in for questioning. 
And then uh, next thing you know, he's uh, being threatened with jail and had to, to admit to everything. I mean, that was a complete setup. Just like Trump was set up in, in New York, that was a complete setup. So don't tell me it doesn't happen. So anyway, but uh, just thought those were some more interesting stories for you. Uh, I, I think that'll be it for the video. Uh, I'll try to find something to tackle. Oh man, I, I got it. I forgot. Check out this video. Hey everyone, you may not know this, but Judicial Watch, over the last year or two, our litigation has cleaned up 4 million dirty names from the voter rolls. More lawsuits ongoing to clean up potentially millions more in Illinois, California. Another lawsuit in the offing for Oregon. Dirty voting rolls can mean dirty elections, and Judicial Watch is doing the heavy lifting to clean them up. Felons voted illegally in Georgia. 66,248 underage and therefore Ill ineligible people to illegally register to vote before their 17th birthday when the law requires 17 and a half years old. At least 2,423 individuals to vote who were not listed as registered. 1,043 individuals to cast ballots <clears throat> who had illegally registered to vote using a post office box. 4,926 individuals voted in Georgia who had registered to vote after their Georgia re voter registration date, thereby canceling their Georgia voter registration. 10,315 or more individuals to vote who are deceased by the time of the election. 395 individuals to vote in Georgia who had cast ballots in another state which is illegal in both states. 15,700 individuals to vote in Georgia who had filed a national change of address with the United States Postal Service prior to November 3rd, 2020. 40,279 individuals to vote who had moved across county lines at least 30 days prior to election day and who had failed to properly re-register to vote in their new county after moving, also in violation of Georgia law.